It's Thursday night and time for Uptown Bills Live, our open mic and more program, which is every Thursday. Uptown Bills is named for Bill Sachter, who's the man in the picture behind me with the beard. Uh, Bill came to Iowa City in the early 1970s and uh, was the founder of Wild Bill's Coffee Shop in North Hall on the university campus. We grew out of that coffee shop. We're like the bigger, badder Bills out in the community. The original one is still there. Uh, Bill had spent about 50 years in a big old state mental hospital in Minnesota. And in the 1960s, Minnesota, along with a bunch of other states, was sending people back to their communities. Uh, Bill, by that time, was uh, in his 50s. And his family was long gone from Minneapolis. But he met the guy on the right, on your right, Barry Morrow. Uh, Barry um, was interested in a brand new kind of technology video at that time. And uh, so he was messing around with that. And uh, his, actually his uh, wife, Bev, met Bill first. Bev worked in a restaurant at a country club, and Bill worked in the kitchen. And uh, they became friends. Uh, and when Barry was offered a job here in Iowa City, Bill came along. Now, this is a lot smaller town, and remember, that's 40-some years ago. So it was really hard to find a job for Bill. Tried various things, tried to see if Bill could drive a truck. Luckily, they were in a cornfield uh, when Bill said uh, he was in the, behind the wheel. And he turned to Barry and says, how do you stop this thing? Um, another uh, effort was to see if uh, Bill could do furniture refinishing, and they almost burnt down North Hall. It was with uh, one of those spontaneous combustion fires. You know, you got just a great, great combination, sunlight, wood stain, um, and uh, lots of wood products. But uh, Bill didn't, couldn't understand that, and he was afraid that he had caused the fire. So anyway, Barry realized that Bill really liked coffee. And so the coffee shop idea emerged. The coffee shop uh, started out in a room hardly bigger than a closet and pretty quickly moved into the room where it is now. North Hall, as some of you know, was once a uh, school. If you were a student teacher at Iowa, that's where you did your student teaching, kindergarten through high school. And the room the coffee shop was in and is still in was the kindergarten room. So if you go there now, there's still the reading circle on the floor and the little cubby holes for everybody. Uh, and that's where Bill held forth for the rest of his life uh, from the time uh, the coffee shop opened until 1983 when he died. His uh, friend Barry thought it would be nice to write a story about what had happened to Bill and his journey and how he got to Iowa City and the coffee shop. The story ended up becoming a screenplay for a movie. And the picture that's behind me is a promotional picture for that first film. Mickey Rooney uh, played Bill. And that's a young Dennis Quaid up in the corner. He played Barry. And the film was a, was a hit, and um, Bill became famous, and people came here to visit him, just like they now go to the Field of Dreams. They'd come to Iowa City and ask where Bill Sachter was, how to find him. So uh, quickly, the producers uh, asked for a second film, and that was called Bill on His Own. And it focused more on the coffee shop, although it wasn't filmed here. Um, but it included Helen Hunt playing a University of Iowa student and a young musician before he had his really large band, Lyle Lovett, is also in the film. A share of it was filmed near Houston. It's supposed to be Southern California, but if you know your flora and fauna, if you look at the thing, you'd say, that's not Southern California, that's too tropical or too humid an area, you know, for the kind of vegetation that you see. Anyway, right after the second film was finished, Bill died. But the coffee shop stayed, and it's still there. And this one opened in 2001, so that makes us 15 years old. Yay! Um, the open mic here has been going on in one form or another since 2002. Originally, it was like a songwriter's uh, showcase. Two singer-songwriters got together and started it. And I think it was called the Unsung Forum, if I remember right. And uh, several years ago, it moved to Thursday night, which is where it is now. And in case you're wondering, yep, it's Thursday night. Uh, at least where we are, not, depending on where you are, maybe another night. But it's Thursday night. Uh, and in the spirit of Bill, we um, 
try to nurture and encourage people of all abilities uh, in various ways through the open mic, through other events, music, art, uh, occasionally theater, and a variety of other things. So welcome. We're delighted you're here. Uh, besides the performance venue, we also have a used bookstore, and um, we're working on a number of other projects, including a radio station. We've received a license from the Federal Communications Commission to operate a radio station. We know a little bit about it. It will be KICI 105.3 FM. Uh, and we're having a fundraiser on Sunday if you'd like to find out more and maybe make a little <laughs> contribution. It's Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock. Uh, the key people in the radio project will be here, and there'll be music by a group called the Chameleons. So come if you wish. Between now and then, Saturday night, we always have music on Saturday night. So Saturday is uh, three musicians this week. Um, a, somebody who's touring is from Chicago, Matt Anderson, and two local people, Jay Knight, who is a singer and songwriter himself, but is best known because he organizes the open mic at the mill, which has been running for 30-some years now. And John Eric. Uh, John Eric is uh, an incredible banjo player. And so those are the three who will be here Saturday night. For more, if you're here in the audience, there is a calendar by the door for you, uh, which lists music and other events. For those of you who may be watching the show, either on TV or online, you can go to our website and find out more, www.uptownbills.org. All right, let's get going with tonight's program. We're starting off with Matt tonight. So come on up and let's see if we can get you s settled. We have a little hedgehog here to encourage you. He says... Uh, Great work. Keep it up. You sound awesome. So it, it helped Joe last week when Joe was here, right? This hedgehog? Yeah, this it was really... Would you like to stand or sit? Or? Uh, for a sit, yeah. Okay. Do that one? And do you need a cord? No, just mic it here. Okay. <clears throat> just down. Okay. Hey, remind us again your last name is? Uh, my name's Matt Martin. Martin? Okay. Martin. Martin. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. All right. All here right. we go. I'm going to play uh, three songs. Two of them are mine, but I'm going to start with one by Nick Drake called Parasite. Can you all hear that? Oh, 
get hung Take a look, you may see me coming through For I'm the parasite who travels two by two two of my own. This one's called Colorblind Blues. <laughs> the salad said it's safer to the match To seal the windows with the racer Wait for better waiting, it's not so bad Everything around me, different shades of gray Don't think about it, not thinking anyway Shining basement eyes Eclipse the bedspread Someone smiles And points a finger miles away from time Everything around me Different shades of gray Don't think about it Not thinking anyway All you knows, you don't know What a go We're all hellos, stand silent in the air And they aren't going anywhere Anymore Everything around me, no different anyway Last one is called Minus Girl. I 
I was young and I believed I was almost me I was almost older than I ever thought I'd be I was someone who knew just what I would say if he were me All my love played dead today, swore it saw a ghost Seemed just now was yesterday, day I miss the most Send you off to die one last time For anybody's crime Send you off to die just one last time Anybody's, anybody's crime Hold me to my lies Ruin all my highs It's alright, it's alright My mind is girl Always some delay Never let me say But it's okay, it's okay My mind is girl Paralyze the time Won't believe the line it's alright, it's alright, my mind is girl Don't you love to care? Don't you ever pray? But it's okay, it's okay, my mind is girl Thank you very much. That's Matt Martin. How long have you been playing? 
10 years, and the songwriting, about the same? Okay. Do you, uh, um, how do you write? Do you sit down and say, I'm going to write a song today, or do they come to you, and then, or a lyric come? Okay, fiddles around with his, with his guitar and it happens. Uh, maybe we'll ask Joe if that works with comedy a little later this evening. Um, let's see, Owen is next. So come on up, I, I think we're all set for you here. I'll move uh, this microphone out of the way, I guess. Right, because no, you're... you don't have to move that. I'll just, you know, announce what songs we are and stuff like that. Okay, great. Yep. All right. Well, thank Matt for setting this up for you. Yeah, thanks, Matt. <laughs> thank you, Tom. Hi, my name is Owen Williams, and I've been playing for about 20-some oh, odd years. And uh, I'm going to play some original songs on my guitar. They're going to be instrumentals, because I prefer to do those. Thank you. 
Thank you. I put a couple of songs together on that one. The uh, one that's kind of Celtic sounding is, uh, you know, like. That's called the Clan of Carr because I found out I was related to some cool people in Scotland. <laughs> and uh, the other stuff, I uh, had to deal with uh, Montana, where I was born, and in the crazy mountains. <laughs> and let's see. I'll play a song that I, I don't know why, it reminds me of a train. Thank you. All right, well, I think I'll give my fingers a rest now. <laughs> All right, Tom, you're up to bat. <laughs> Hi. 
That's uh, Owen Williams. Always reminds me of a young uh, Leo Kotke. I'm from Minneapolis, and that's where Leo started. Uh, um, he played at two coffee houses, one called the Coffee House Extempore, and the other one was called The Hole, W-H-O-L-E. Uh, and f unlike uh, Owen, for the first 10 years that uh, Leo was performing, he didn't talk, literally did not talk. He would look down at his guitar, and that was it. And he didn't sing or anything either. Um, and I think about maybe 15 years into his career, he actually sang a song. And on the CD, it says at the top, Leo sings on this one. So anyway, Leo's still around. And Matt reminds me a little of, um, uh, well, of course, Nick Drake, but also uh, Donovan. Do you know his uh, stuff? Uh, his, his early work was, was much more folky. And uh, so you reminded me a little bit of him. So, pardon? Yeah, it was uh, it was a long time ago, and uh, I met him in a in a coffee shop in El Paso, Texas, of all places. So he was performing there, and it was the middle of the night. Um, but anyway, nice chat. So, all right, uh, let's see. We got a couple things to do here. We have a drawing to do, and maybe Owen will come back and uh, draw us a couple winners. Uh, we'll give away the. Um, CD first. This is a local group called the Recliners. Uh, great, great local group. They performed here several times. So if you would pick out a name and Skeller Smith. <laughs> yeah, come, come on up. You won. <laughs> here you go. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, and then we have this uh, coffee cup with a very subtle joke, Bach to Bach, <laughs> on it. All right. And the winner will be? Uh, let's see. Joe Beetle. Hey. Yeah. Is that Beetle? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yep. awesome. He's one of the Beetles. All right. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <clears throat> hand this to you. Now you have to eat all the entries so all that right, pe <laughs> pe people don't worry that we sell them to life insurance companies or something. <laughs> when, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Bill Sector came from uh, Minneapolis and um, he lived in a, in a very poor neighborhood. His uh, um, near near downtown Minneapolis, uh, he was born in 1913, and his uh, parents were Russian Jewish immigrants, and um, they lived in a two-story uh, house, and uh, they lived upstairs, and then downstairs was the little grocery store that the family ran. Uh, Margot Ashmore is uh, the editor of the local community newspaper in that part of Minneapolis, and she's been following the Bill Sachter story ever since she met uh, Barry when the first movie came out. And uh, she wrote a little essay that I'm going to read about uh, Bill's neighborhood and what it was like when he was a child. So she took this in part from a biography of Bill called The Unlikely Celebrity, and there are copies of it in the other room if you'd like to take a look. But just a, it's just a brief excerpt, gives you an idea of what it was like living in his neighborhood. And the, the time is uh, 1917, and Bill's father had just died. His father's name was Sam. The people at the funeral were sad and very cold. Some were crying. But most everyone was moving around trying to keep warm. Bill watched the faces in the eyes of those standing around the open pit surrounded by the frozen dirt. Bill always watched people's faces, since he was never too sure of the meaning of their words. He knew the funeral was serious, but he thought dying was like being sick, and you probably could recover. Waiting to go to the institution, those were happy times for Bill. His regular school didn't want him, so he got to stay home and help his mother, Mary Resnick Sachter, in the store at 804 Aldrich Avenue North. Everybody who came to the shop knew his name. 
How you doing, Bill? Helping your mom? You get to help your mom now, Bill. Now that your dad passed on, you got to help your mom. The store was small. It was two stories tall, made out of wood, and located on the corner of the block. On the ground floor, there was only one big room with a storage area in the back. This is where they sold things. There were lots of barrels of sugar, coffee, beans, and everything else. It all smelled so good. Back by the storage room was the biggest, blackest, iron potbelly stove you've ever seen. This was the warmest spot in the building, and the kids loved to sneak in behind it. They could hide themselves behind the wood that was stacked nearby. Then mom would come in, throw wood in the stove, and kick them out. Sometimes she felt sorry for them, though, when it was really cold, and let them stay. The family lived above the store in two tiny bedrooms, a small kitchen and a living room. Two girls and Bill shared one of the bedrooms. In the other bedroom were the parents. The walls weren't very thick. They didn't have much furniture. Each had a mattress on the floor and some wood crates to put their clothes in. They had electricity, but most of the time they used kerosene lamps. There were four windows, one looking outside each side of the second floor. Lots of cold air came in. Their dad had nailed cardboard over the windows on the north side to keep them from freezing. It was tough living then, buddy, Bill said, not like today. These homes were never meant to be more than cheap housing for immigrants. By the late 1890s and into the first two decades of the 20th century, the houses were filled with people from Poland, Lithuania, and Russia. All were Jews or descendants of Jews who had previously been expelled from other European countries. The Sachter family had chosen to live in a tightly enclosed Jewish neighborhood on the north side of Minneapolis. This area served as their community where they could establish synagogues, form brotherhoods and sisterhoods, and operate their own social welfare system through a neighborhood tithe of 10 cents per week per family. Many Jews, like Sam Sachter, Bill's dad, had worked in the garment industry, but many others found employment, many others found areas of employment simply closed to Jews at the time. Some became peddlers of dry goods and notions. Some Jews set up shops in their homes. Every block in the Jewish section could boast one shop where the home and the workplace were combined. All right, now we've got Joe to come up and talk with us. Uh, we'll, we'll see, uh, Margot uh, appears every couple of years here and uh, who knows, maybe she'll show up this spring and tell us what's going on in Bill's old neighborhood now. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I talked to her the other day. She thought she might come around Christmas time, but she said, you're so far away. That drive, she drove, had driven only to northern Iowa somewhere. And, but, uh, you know, it's 300 miles from uh, this coffee shop to the Hard Times Cafe in Minneapolis. Oh, really? Another coffee shop. So exactly 300 miles, door to door. All right, Joe saying goodbye to Owen, and now he's going to come up and be on stage. Yeah. Thank you. Get out, right? Oh, no, no, you can stay as long <laughs> as you want. All right, it's yours. That cup says. Bach to Bach. Yeah, there's a Drake song called Back to Back. That's pretty funny. Okay, that's the new kids will get it. Okay. Young kids know what I'm talking about. All right. You guys were talking about my writing. You were talking about how you write songs. Yeah. Uh, try to be a comedian, and what you do is you just pick three topics, and then you get on stage, and then you try to be funny. That's how it works out. Yeah. I have colon cancer uh, as one of my topics tonight. I have colon cancer. Um, Benjamin Button, the movie. And I have uh, technology. That's it. So that's what we're going to try to weave in to make money. Yeah. Are, you, are you excited? Uh, colonoscopy? Uh, what is it? 
<laughs> I'm writing that down, and I'm taking that to the top with me. Uh, a semicolon. That's good, yeah. Um, yeah. This is derailed already. No, that's okay. That's okay. I want a cup tonight, so I don't really, you know, really don't. At least tomorrow I can drink some coffee. You know what I mean? That's it. And then you can just, oh, back to back? That was funny. Yeah. Uh, fuck to Bach. Yeah. Drake. No new problems. No new friends. Okay. Nobody knows who Drake is in here, do we? You guys don't listen to Drake? I thought you two would. That was more a joke just for you guys. Yeah. Okay. No offense to you guys over here or anywhere. Okay. All right. We're already... In I already made fun of that guy last week about his hair, so I'm kind of trying to avoid some eye contact. That's why I was going for you guys over here. Yeah, <laughs> no. I'm just kidding, sir. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's the backup. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you guys just wait five years. I'll still be here doing comedy, and I'll have... Well, sir, I can't have less hair than you, but I was trying. You know, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was trying to get on your side. Yeah, yeah. That's why I look so Amish, though, because I'm bald and I'm just growing out my beard. And my beard comes in red, so it doesn't really fit well with the balding thin. But I don't know what to do. Are you doing the same thing? You're growing out the beard because you're bald? No, you... Yeah, I was going to say, you, you do have some thick hair. Oh, your beard's red? Yeah. Do you like it or do you not like it? Yeah, it's a weird thing. I don't know. See, it's when it gets like... Uh, I don't know. And then I don't have a mustache. That's the worst part. It looks just like there's like fish gills coming out of my... Because you can't see because my nose is too big. So then... I don't know. It's some personal things I'm working on. You know, I don't know. See, but at least like I do have to give you some credit. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you just shaved your head. Right. Yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. Do you think you're going to follow suit, sir? No. Yeah, of course not. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not either. See, that, that that that's what we were talking about. I don't know how I'm going to... Because my sister works at a cosmetology place. So I will be able to get, like, the Bosley, the Rogaine, the Nexium, I think it's called. Right? I'll be able to get all that stuff. And she does give it to me for Christmas every year, which is cool because I'm not 24, you know. That's not a huge kick in the face. Like, oh, yeah, okay. You know. But so then we were talking about how am I going to affect it to the disinfected areas. You know, how am I only going to get it on here? That's what we were talking about. And I feel like I'm going to hold on to my hair just like you. You know, I'm going to hold on to it like I'm a high school, like I played varsity high school. You know what I mean? And I never want to give up that dream of playing the pro in the pros. I don't know. My hair. I used to have super long hair. I kind of looked like Owen Wilson when I had long hair. It was cool. And my nose was kind of messed up. It was awesome. Yeah, I was a freshman in high school. Yeah, that was the time. That was the last time I had a girlfriend too, as well. So I think those two things are correlated. You know. I don't know. <clears throat> so uh, I was thinking about like my fa like my father and I. We look alike. Uh, his beard grows in red as well. He used to have blonde hair as well. Uh, so like I was thinking. Like every time I sit on the couch with him and I uh will look at each other and it's weird. It's kind of like a it's kinda of like I'm looking in the mirror. Actually it's exactly like I'm looking in the mirror because he doesn't uh talk, so and so uh yeah, I was thinking it's kind of like a reverse Benjamin Button situation. You know, instead of how Benjamin Button gets younger, it's gonna kind of me getting older and looking in the I'm more of looking into the Benjamin Button, Benjamin Button mirror. You know what I mean? I'm kind of looking into the... I'm living a movie is what I'm really trying to say. You know, I'm watching the movie unravel. I'm watching my father as he just... His life isn't quite the same as it used to be 20 years ago, you know? He's holding on to the recliner as it, as it was his hair that he did probably 10 years ago, you know? He just is never going to leave that chair. That chair is always him. There's a, perf there's, a perf there's a permanent indentation of him on the chair. You know, I don't know. He doesn't even, you know, his wife doesn't lo doesn't love him anymore because their marriage is already over. It's not because there's no love in marriage anymore. It's just because he's done trying, you know. He would way rather just open up a bag of Skittles, you know. That's it. That's what he would rather do. He would just rather sit on that chair 
and eat the Skittles. That's what he would rather do, you know, and watch football and never leave. You know, in fact, when I do go home, he probably will be on the chair, you know, on the recliner, you know. Do you guys have your own chair at home? Do you sit on the recliner? On the chair. Yeah, you sure do, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I don't know, when I was growing up, when I would play sports with my dad, it would always be the coolest thing when I would win. You know, when you'd beat your dad in a sport, that would be the coolest, that would be the, the greatest day of your life. You'd be like, Dad, I'm watching the 6 o'clock news, you know? How about you move over, huh? I'm going to take a seat in that recliner, you know? How about you, huh? You pass me the remote. Yeah, yeah. You put on the French-made outfit, Dad, you know? You, you ring the bell, you know? You know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, come on. Like, jeez. You know, you put some mayo on that sandwich, right? Like, come on, extra mayo. You mow the lawn with scissors, you know. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I used to have to mow the lawn with scissors as a kid. Yeah, have you guys ever tried that? Yeah, it's the same things we would cut our pizzas with. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do that, right? That's weird, but it's kind of like the cutting the lawn with scissors is like. I don't know, you're never going to get it right. There's no way you're ever going to be. There's no there's no craft aisle at Menards for long cutting scissors, you know. There's no you don't go you don't go with your uh uh you don't go Yeah, Home Depot. Yeah, you don't ask your kindergarten te- your kids kindergarten teacher where to get the long cutting scissors at. You know what I mean? There's no there's no big boy. There's no uh Tonka truck cutting scissors for the lawn, you know, there's no, it doesn't have an engine on it, no, there's no, uh, I'm trying to think of a scissors company, but nobody ever cares what the scissor company is, you know, there's no baby, there's no Johnson and Johnson of the scissor, of the scissor world, you know, there's never, uh, Fiskars? Okay, wow, <laughs> it really backfired there, Tom, I thought there was for sure going to be nobody new. The Fiskers? Really? How'd you guys know Fiskers? Oh, it's like the duct tape of the scissor world? Oh, it's the bee's knees. All right. Okay, well, that's weird. Fiskers. All right. Remember that. Yeah, we're, we're writing songs tonight. Yeah. Songs of sadness. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was talking about cancer because I think, th- like, here's why I thought about cancer. And to make it funny, because everything in this world is eventually going to, we're all going to get cancer. I mean, I I know that seems super sad, but it's all going to happen. Right. You know, because there's the thing, like, if you talk on your phone and we hold it, it gives you the radiation from it, gives you cancer. You know, McDonald's gives you cancer. Technology gives you cancer. Your father gives you cancer because of his hereditary genes. Right. Yeah. Still needs still needs some work. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, okay. I have something about a lawn chair. You know, I think of my father when I was cutting the the lawn with scissors. He was on a lawn chair. You know, and then it just moved inside for the winter time. No, I don't know. Okay. Tom, you know that thing, uh, that fundraiser. Yeah, I think I'm coming to that, except for uh, at my church, guess what uh, potluck they're having after Mass? A Mexican fiesta. Yeah, so I don't know, priorities, you know, I don't know <laughs> which one is. No, I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to be here. pretty sure I'm going to be here. Yeah, but I just started going to church recently, um, which is cool. It's uh, I need it, you know. Um, <laughs> and... Uh, so, like, randomly, people, when the when the uh, sermon, when the pastor's up, he'll be like, uh, people will just randomly yell out, amen. And it kind of just, like, throws him off. Like, he every time, he just doesn't really know what to do. It would kind of, like, be like if I was up here, and you guys were like, yeah, cancer's a good idea. Yeah, you, you never heard of Friskers? You never heard of Friskers? And I was like, whoa, what? Friskers? What? You know? And it, like, throws me off. That would, you know. It would be like that, because that, that happened, you know. Uh, and then, uh, oh, man. And then it would also just be like if I was at uh, McDonald's, 
and I was like at the drive thru and I was like, Oh yeah, can I get three Big Macs, uh two McChickens, chickens and could you hold the cancer? And then the guy <laughs> and the guy behind the guy behind me's like uh hey, Amen, brother, yeah, you could dread him. Never mind. My brain's a cancer right now. Uh So, uh, we were talking about Benjamin Button earlier, and, uh, oh, I already did that, didn't I? How he gets younger, and then I get colon cancer, instead of turning into the, okay. Cancer is yoga. That's going to that's gonna be real good. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, I've been, uh. If you couldn't tell by my looks, uh, I've been sober for over a year. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's funny. I think that uh, that's, like, one of the weirdest things when you tell people that you're uh, an alcoholic. They always ask why, too. You know, they're always like, well, why did you stop? I don't know. You saw me every time I was out. My money move at the, at the discotheca used to be, uh, I would just, my pants would just be half on my ankles every time. That's what my move was. They would just be down. And then people are like, well, why'd you quit drinking? I don't know. You were so much fun. You were so crazy. I don't know. Yeah, I have quite a bit of troubles uh, in the legal department. And so I don't get it. Uh, I don't get why they would ask why. You know, why do I quit drinking? But I was a lot more fun then. That is true. Uh, here's the thing, though, that like, I miss the most about not drinking. It's not anything to do with the actual booze. Um, it's just the irresponsibility, really. There's something that you can never... You know, when you were shaving your head off, that was probably the most fun, exciting time of your life. You know what I mean? You felt so free and probably a little scared at the same time, didn't you? Yeah, you felt a little scared. Yeah, That's the greatest part about drinking. That was never... It was never the, like, actual like drink or the actual getting drunk it was always the irresponsibility that was the fun part you know what i mean you're just wild you're young you have a little bit of hair right and you're ready to just you're going to give it all for pretty much nothing you know you're going to give it all i don't know gambling against your looks i don't know i feel like i have like a little uh never mind that's not appropriate for this room i feel like i have uh i was going to say i look like ted nugent but mixed with somebody else okay never mind Uh, I was going to say I look like a Woody Harrelson, like a half Woody Harrelson, Ted Nugent vibe going on. Yeah. Okay. The Nuge cat scratch fever. All right, yeah, so I'm just going to leave on this. Uh, my life is kind of weird. I always take like one step forward and two steps back. Were you just singing cat scratch fever? Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah, my life is like a little, my, my, my life is weird. I always take like one step forward or like two steps back. I'll always do something successful and then I'll do something just not so successful. And so I feel like it's like when you're at the grocery store and you're like running your debit card, but you can't figure out the direction of which way to run it, but you, you mean your mind just not working. So you're just running it and you keep on swiping it and it's just not working. It's not, it's not as accepting or declining. It's just you're running it the wrong way. And you just keep on swiping it, right? And then you get an OWI. That never happened. All right. And then have you ever, it's like when you have like a three-prong outlet, and it's only supposed to go into a two, but it's like a three-prong one to fit in a two. So you just keep on jamming it in there. You know, but it won't fit, and you keep on getting mad at it, and then you get an OWI. That never happened. It's like when you have like a plastic sack, you know, and you can't, your fingers won't quite get it. They quite won't figure it out. Because, you know, and it's just the wrong end. And then you get an OWI. That never happened. Okay. How about this? Have you guys, have you guys ever tried to eat a taco while driving a car? It's pretty hard. You have to uh, make sure you don't spill any of the taco sauce on your pants, right? Yeah. You have to uh, crack the beer, right? Yeah. While keeping the car straight, right? Yeah. You take the belt and you put it around your arm. Right? Yeah. You tap the vein, right? You stick the taco in your vein. 
And you take the mild sauce and you shove it up your nose. Oh, yes, Taco Bell, I will marry you. And then you get a note of UI. <laughs> that ever happened to anybody? No. Okay. I'm gonna, okay, I'll leave you on this. Uh, it's crazy because like this uh, stand-up has kept me sober for over a year, which is really weird because people don't really get it. Because when, when they see scenarios like this, they're just like, wouldn't you want to drink right now? Like, wouldn't that make you want to just go over the edge? You know, I can see it in your guys' faces. It's okay. It's small and mighty. No, but it's, in, it's different because it's, it's actually the exact opposite. Uh, it makes sense, though. Being an alcoholic and doing this keep me sober because I'm addicted to uh, failure. So. All right, that'll work for me. I'm Joe. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, that's Joe Beetle, and uh, he comes around from time to time. You also can see him. Where else are you? Uh, you're hosting, right? Yeah, every Monday night at the Club. Every Monday night at the Yacht Club. Starts late, though, past most of our bedtimes. 10 o'clock, it starts. 